This is a uh, innovative implementation. So this is an actual case study rather than a lot of the theoretical things that you've been talking about before. Um, we'll be talking about a, um, a, a real life case study from uh, our good friends at Grass Valley. So uh, Morris, take it away. Thank you. Um, thanks to NAB and VSF for giving us the opportunity to tell you about one of our uh, real deployments of COTS IP using SEMPTE 2110. In this case, to deliver an outside broadcast uh, UHD HDR production. I'm Morris Snell, I'm from Grass Valley, I came from the SAM side of the business. So, the challenge that our customer gave us, uh, this was back in uh, late 2017, early 2018, was we want to build a new UHD HDR outside broadcast facility. And the scale of that facility, the number of UHD cameras, UHD processing channels and so on, meant that a traditional SDI workflow just wasn't feasible. It wouldn't fit in the truck. It was not possible to get a big enough SDI routing system. So the customer wanted to go down the COTS-based IP routing approach. And uh, their preference was to use Arista. And uh, a strong uh, push from the customer and equally from the Grass Valley side was to be standards-based because as much as we'd love to give the customer 100% of everything they need from one vendor, that's not realistic. So standards-based is critical to allow the customer to pick and choose uh, the range of products to meet their overall need. So SEMPTE 2110 was, was critical, um, and specifically 2110 rather than 2022, because the two real benefits that 2110 gives us, the most important one is the audio breakaway flexibility the same flexibility we have in SDI, but delivered through COTS IP. And there's also a bandwidth saving, uh, particularly in 50 hertz countries, it's very significant, 30 to 40% bandwidth saving using 2110 compared to 2022. So that was the reason to choose SEMPTE 2110. And uh, just a little bit of history, but NAB 2013 was the first live demonstration of what we now call SEMPTE 2110 on the Snell booth as it was then. So we were able to deliver in 2018 without any problems a, a live 2110 based system. Also other crucial standards, the SEMPTE 2059 uh, wrapper for the IT industry PTP standard. And to deliver the performance that we need to replace SDI performance, uh, IGMP v3, the multicast routing is a critical capability in those COT switches. So uh, the customer wanted to work in a mixed reference environment because whilst PTP lets you address 2110 flow realignment and also lets you align your SDI, because this was going to be a, a truck and a facility operating in a hybrid world, connecting to other trucks with SDI, they needed to be able to lock to black and burst reference as well as PTP. And uh, right from the very first use of that truck, it was going to be doing uh, UHD HDR 2160p production, but also having to provide a full HD 1080i signal for the uh, large volume of um, broadcast viewers. So being future ready with HDR, with 1080p, with 2160p was a key requirement for this project. And one of the benefits of moving to COTS IP is uh, massive simplification in wiring. So if you think that, for to take a small example, a, uh, a COTS 1RU switch with a total of 32 100 gig fiber connections, that can deliver the same routing performance as a 1,000 square SDI router, which is typically two complete 19 inch racks with 2,000 cables plus separate cables for timing, uh, audio, uh, control and so on. And all of that can be replaced in a, a small COTS 1RU switch with a massive simplification in cabling. This system, as you'll see, went bigger than that, so it was more than a, a 1RU COTS equivalent. So the technical requirements for this customer to have multiple live productions going on, uh, some in UHD, some in HD. And to get the real benefit of that COTS IP technology, they wanted to minimize the amount of SDI to IP conversion. So they wanted to choose as many native IP devices as were available at the time, including switchers, multi-viewers, uh, processing, and so on. 
and there was a remote production requirement where sometimes a truck would work in isolation as a single independent production and sometimes two trucks would come together sometimes with a big broadcast facility and all three would be linked together delivering remote production functionality between those locations and as I mentioned there was a need for SDI uh, to IP conversion because uh, many of the devices that the customer wanted to use weren't available with native IP but even where the customer's facility was entirely IP they still had to deliver SDI to other trucks and receive SDI so it was going to be an economic problem for that customer to invest in hundreds of channels of fixed gateway functions so they were looking for something that they could repurpose the initial gateways to do that SDI to IP but as the devices migrated to native IP rather than throw them away they could migrate them to another function and a critical thing from the operator perspective was that uh, these trucks would do productions day by day week by week for different customers and uh, you never know what operators might turn up this might be the first time they've ever been on an IP truck and they shouldn't need to know or care whether they're routing IP SDI or a hybrid mixture of the two. It needs to be exactly the same workflows for the multi viewer, for the production switcher, for the routing control, for everything the operators do that has to be fast and uh, consistent. So how did we deliver this system? So the COTS IP core, as you said, was based around Arista and uh, the main systems use the Arista 7508R. So that's a modular line card based chassis where each line card is essentially the same capacity as that 1,000 square I, I described for a COTS 1RU switch. So this had the capacity in one of these switches to go up to at least an 8,000 square SDI equivalent system or 2,000 square in full uncompressed UHD. And choosing a large single chassis as opposed to a more common IT architecture of spine and leaf gave a lot of simplicity um, and SDI performance uh, for this system. Uh, so when we say non-blocking, this is what we're used to in the world of SDI. It means that any user can take any source to any destination in, in, without any restriction in the combinations. There's no bandwidth limitation ultimately. And the simplest way to deliver that is with a, a monolithic or a big large switch rather than a distributed switch system. And in an environment like a truck or a broadcast center, there's really no need to distribute it when these uh, available COT switches can scale to massive sizes all within a single switch. In order to deliver the most cost-effective solution, it was also important that we could let the customer choose the level of Dash 7 redundancy, i.e. dual IT network redundancy, appropriate to their need. So in some parts of the system, they had complete redundancy that we had used for any 24 by 7 operation. That's two entirely independent Arista chassis, uh, any one of which can deliver the full SDI performance, but when they're both there, you have full redundancy. In some of the systems where space and cost was an issue, uh, they could go to multiple line card redundancy within a single switch chassis. And, and that's often a good compromise for something like a truck where you can choose to do switch maintenance in the truck downtime and you don't need the overhead of, of complete dash seven. And then for some parts of the system, actually there were less critical flows. They might be non on air monitoring and those can be configured in a non-7. They can just go onto one of those two networks, thus saving bandwidth, thus reducing the total cost, size, weight, power, aircon requirements of the overall system. And this customer wanted us to give them two proposals, a traditional 1040 gig proposal, or using the newer technology of 25, 50, 100 gig. And it's got a, to cut a long and complicated story short, it was about 40% cheaper to use the newer technology. And that came down to the density, the cable simplification, reduction in power, weight, rack space, aircon requirements, and so on. So where possible, the majority of the IP devices are 255100, which is all the same technology that connects to the same 100 gig switch ports. But of course, it's fully backwards compatible. So where we had, say, audio devices or any other devices that needed 1040, that's all compatible in the same system. So. As we've said, uh, flexible FPGA core was a requirement for this customer, that on uh, one of the uh, major events they delivered last year, for example, the Wimbledon sports event, 
um, there was a requirement for more than 100 of these gateway cards with more than 1,000 channels of gateway function converting SDI to IP and IP to SDI. But this customer could see that as they looked forward to the 2019 event, the 2020 event, that requirement for gateways was going to reduce and reduce as they refreshed the other parts of their system to native IP. So the cards that started on day one as gateways, they can now choose to load in a new license and turn it into a multi-viewer or turn it into a broadcast NAT firewall to allow them to safely connect one IP truck to another IP truck without any risk of clashing IP addresses and so on. And they wanted a relatively small failure block. They didn't want hundreds of channels uh, all connected through a single device. So small modular cards gave them the best uh, functionality for this application. And uh, outside the gateways, which is the, the legacy interfacing for SDI, we had native IP multi-viewers at a very large scale, um, around about 1,000 pips and um, up to 100 heads. Uh, we had native IP vision mixers, um, multiple switches delivering multiple productions uh, linked together. We had the uh, full SDN control and flow management, obviously a critical part of, of using COTS IP. But alongside that, um, it was important to deliver a facility monitoring capability. And part of the reason for that is that a lot of the diagnostics workflows that the engineers are familiar with in SDI, such as patching a cable, plugging it into the scope, for example, none of that works in IP. You have to have a whole new way of thinking, not as the operator, as I've said, the operators work the same way, but as the engineer, you have to have a way of, a new ways of thinking, new ways of fault finding and, and solving problems. So the monitoring system became much more important than it would have done in a traditional SDI workflow. Also important was the configuration software, because if you look at a few years back, some of the early IP projects that were really science experiments, uh, many months of um, hard work, manual configuration, duplicated data entry, that wouldn't work in, in a live system like this. In fact, um, some of these trucks, uh, our engineers had about four days commissioning time on the truck. That's to do everything, the multi-viewers, the switches, the complete routing control system, the complete monitoring system. And a couple of weeks later, the truck was live on air to a billion viewers. So it had to be really fast, automated, efficient tools for configuring, monitoring, and controlling the system. And as you said, uh, to get the cost of the system down, they wanted as much native IP as possible, but with the capability to integrate any legacy SDI devices as required. So what did it look like? A couple of uh, diagrams to show you what it looked like. And there were essentially three systems, two um, uh, large production trucks and a broadcast center that was used for the large sports events that could be reconfigured into multiple remote fly packs to do multiple uh, small events at different times of the year. So starting off with the large broadcast center, um, the IP COPS routing core is a full Dash 7 redundancy of the Arista 7508R switches. And these, as I said, has a capacity of up to 2,000 uncompressed UHD or 8,000 square 1080p SDI routing equivalent uh, with modular line cards. So the customer had a mixture of predominantly 100 gig line cards, which can deliver the 125 and 50 gig connections directly into the switch. And they also had one line card delivering them the 40 10 gig interfaces for audio control management, PTP and so on. So I guess the heart of the live production is the Kahuna production switches, in this case multiple switches, each delivering multiple productions. Uh, and those have uh, uh, 50 gig native links which connect into the 100 gig switch ports. And these were distributed around the facility again with many different production areas. On the, uh, for the SDI interfacing, we have the gateways in a, in a Grass Valley modular frame. This, the IQUCP25, was the predominant card used. So four of those 25 gig devices connect into a 100 gig switch port natively. Then another critical component, the native IP multiviewers. So they had multiple of the Grass Valley MV820 IP multiviewers, each of which has four times 100 gig direct connections into the switch in a Dash 7 uh, redundant environment. And the Grass Valley control system, delivering the SDN, the flow management, the real-time fast clean switching control on a redundant pair of COTS servers. And 
critical component of any 2110 system is the PTP sync generator. So for this particular system, there is a redundant pair of Tektronics SPG-8000A units. And to allow us to exceed some of the uh, capacity limits of the PTP functionality in the Arista and Tektronics units, we also had a redundant pair of Meinberg uh, SPG slave master generators. So it's almost the equivalent of a reference DA for black and burst. Uh, it allows you to go to a larger scale of system without overloading the, either the master SPG or the boundary clock functionality in the COTS IP switches. And upstream, what the operators see, as I said, looks exactly like a traditional SDI workflow. So the same uh, router control panels, the same router soft screens, the same third party protocols if you have an external controller automation system. And then for engineering, there is those critical configuration and monitoring tools as well. So that was the, the broadcast center built for these very large, live, premium uh, UHD productions. But uh, throughout the rest of the year, the customer can reconfigure those same hardware devices into smaller fly packs that can do multiple independent productions at different places around the world. So each one of these fly packs could take the same Arista switches, but perhaps use a single one and achieve that mid-level redundancy I described earlier, where the Dash 7 redundancy is across a pair of line cards. So the second Arista switch can deliver a completely separate fly pack. So these are essentially two uh, mirrored fly packs here. And each has one of the native IP Kahuna production uh, switches, uh, a number of the MV820 IP native IP multiviewers, and a number of gateways as required in the system. And I'll, I'll come back to Audio Live. Uh, we have time in a minute. The other two fly packs uh, used additional Arista frames, the smaller size frames, but using the existing line cards. So they didn't have to buy more line cards, they could take them out of the uh, big system and distribute them across multiple switches. So this was again all about getting a, a, a cost effective solution that delivered these multiple types of production, all from a, a common set of, of hardware. And the, uh, the final diagram is the large uh, UHD HDR uncompressed production truck. So again, we have the mid-size of Arista, the 7504R uh, COTS IP switch with uh, a minimum of two 100 gig line cards allowing us to do that line card redundancy 7022-7 in a fully 702110 uh, workflow. So again, we have the Kahuna native IP uh, production switcher. We have the MV820 native IP multiviewer. We have both uh, legacy SDI and legacy MADI conversion in and out of 2110. Uh, we have the same Tektronix uh, sync generator. In this case, there's no need for the Meinberg. Uh, we have the control and monitoring system as before. And as a, uh, an option in some of their productions where they have this uh, line card redundancy, they may also put in an emergency cut SDI router in case of catastrophic failure of the COTS IP switch. So there's a lot of flexibility there in how they use it for different productions at a cost-effective usage of this COTS IP technology. So what were some of the technical challenges? So audio is often a technical challenge when you think about video. And um, one of the complexities here is that the 211030 standard for audio isn't just a single choice. There's a whole menu of what options would you like to use. And uh, that means inevitably that all of the different IP receivers, not just Grass Valley, but other vendors, are not necessarily all going to implement the same flavor of 2110-30 uh, audio. So when the control system needs to take a particular source to a particular destination, it has to be aware of the capabilities and the, if you like, the subformat of 211030 that the source device is sending and what's the received capabilities of that received device. And if they're compatible, then of course we can do a direct multicast flow route between the two. But where they are not compatible or where there is a complex requirement to shuffle from multiple flows, more flows than the receiver is capable of receiving, then the control system will automatically use this virtual COTS-based software shuffler. So this sitting on COTS servers is a big 
mono audio router that can take in a number of 211030 audio flows with any of these different flavors of 211030 and break them down to their mono channels, shuffle and route them internally, and then generate new 211030 bundles. So even a, a simple 211030 receiver that can only take one flow can now bring in multiple audio languages perhaps or multiple audio sources that have come from simultaneous different 211030 sources. So that's um, Audio Live, uh, this is a Grass Valley product, the Audio Live COTS based software shuffler was a critical way of solving uh, some of those audio channels. How do we do channel swaps? How do we deal with multiple 211030 sources that all need to be delivered to a single receiver? And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the solution to making this system cost effective for the long term as that initial need for high volumes of gateway conversion reduced over time as they migrated to native IP devices, the solution was to offer software license based um, on our, what we call the universal compute platform. So this is a hardware that, based on the licenses you load, can be a multi-viewer, it can be a broadcast NAT firewall, it can be a, an SDI gateway or other functions in the future. So that's uh, a quick introduction to that, that live truck, which has now been on air for more than a year. Uh, those two trucks, those fly packs, those broadcast centers. So they're on a regular basis delivering UHD, HDR productions and simulcast 1080 productions um, of different sizes and scales, but uh, uh, very successful year of usage of these systems so far, all based on COTS IP. So thank you very much for listening and very happy to take any questions. Very good, thank you, Marth. All right, um, if we have any questions, I'd be happy to bring you the microphone. Here we go. So you said you had them broken down into different flat packs. Now, what did you do with the uh, broadcast center? Was that re reallocated as well? That's right, so they built the broadcast center in mobile uh, racks so that they could wheel it in and out of different uh, sports venues uh, that needed that requirement. And then individual racks could be taken to a smaller event um, it's a modular system, essentially, a modular broadcast center, mobile broadcast center. All right. Thank you very much.